It's time for the Sports Blitz, the only live streamed local sports show in Arkansas with all the latest on the sports stories that matter to you. Welcome into the Cogswell Motors studios on a Friday. Martin Freeman, Weldon Braxton, Maddie Lasseter, and even Dave Brown over here in the studio to talk some sports. I feel like I'm about to sneeze. Three, but I'm not. two, but I'm not. Good. It's not going to happen. All I'm right. going gonna, gonna, gonna to tough it out here. Welcome in. We're going to talk some sports today. We've got local sports, uh, some Russellville Cyclones teams. Take one in the state tournament, both boys and girls soccer teams. Congratulations on your wins. The boys, I think they won like 8-1 to one or something yeah. like that. And the girls won 4-2. to two. Uh, Big first-round wins for those teams. Also, state baseball, uh, the Russellville Cyclones won yesterday. I thought that tournament was uh, postponed, but apparently 6A was the only one who wasn't postponed. Okay. And so they, they're just trying to take care of business. But we got some local sports. We've also got some uh, state and national sports. Talk about the NBA playoffs as the conference finals are upon us. It's now real deal basketball. You've got rid of all the pretenders. Uh, not to say that teams like the Clippers were pretenders. They put up a good fight against yeah. the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. But you get rid of teams like the Washington Wizards who really – What? I mean, really were they – Mark. Were they something? <laughs> I mean, the Portland Trailblazers, that I thought a lot higher, more highly of the Portland Trailblazers – during the Houston series, yeah. and then I realized that that Olay defense was swinging both ways. That James Harden defense, and you know, honestly, they the Houston Rockets play defense like fitness center defense, like mm. rec center pickup ball defense. Yeah, I, okay, you feel like shooting it, go for it. You feel like going it, man, nah, go on. You yeah, the only thing, at least the fitness center and the paint, they might form you a little bit. Houston won't even do that. I mean, but Portland will be fine. They're just not ready yet. I think there's a there was a picture going around as they were about to be swept by San Antonio of their five starters across the board. And that's a good looking starting five. You look at Matthews, Damian Lillard, Batum, Lopez, and Aldridge. I mean, you keep that five together, they can make some noise. But you know, I'm looking forward to our NBA conversation, Mark. As you said, the conference finals are upon us. Game one of the Eastern Conference Finals is Sunday. And Mark, you, you said we've got the contenders. We have three contenders in the Conference Finals. And we have the Pacers, who who are also in the Conference Finals. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I look forward to breaking down those matchups. Also, the coaching carousel in the NBA is heated up. Steve Kerr is now the head coach of the Golden State Warriors. That took place a little bit after we went off the air the other day. But there's other vacancies. Obviously, the New York Knicks, who are now still looking for a coach after they swung and missed on Steve Kerr. You got the Los Angeles Lakers, uh, the Utah Jazz, Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, Minnesota Timberwolves, all still looking for head coaches. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what goes on with the coaching carousel. We'll talk a little bit about that decision that Steve Kerr made. A lot of folks didn't really see it coming. Uh, I'd bet you a million dollars Phil Jackson didn't see it coming. Uh, but now Steve Kerr is the head coach of the Golden State Warriors. We'll talk a little bit about Michael Sam today. I know he's a topic of conversation, something that we've – honestly, we've kind of avoided a little bit. But he made a decision that is the subject of our CrossFit Russell poll question today. He's going to be a part of a – what they're calling a documentary series. In other words, a reality TV show. Uh, they don't want to call it that because of the negative connotation to it on the Oprah Winfrey Network that is going to air through the um, off season, through the training camp and all that, and trying to see uh, the process behind Michael Sam being drafted to trying to make the St. Louis Rams team. The question that, that I have with it, and I've asked the CrossFit Russell poll question, do you have a problem with him being involved in a reality TV series. Now, there's something to be said about uh, hard knocks or something like that. You don't really get a choice. They pick when they're going to come to you. You can tell the, the the franchise can tell them, no, we don't want you here. But when they decide that they're going to – it's not about one individual player. It's about the team. Right, this totally is going to be one guy being followed around, and how does he react? How, does, you know, how do things go for him? And – from what I've heard, now this is obviously I'm not there, so I can't tell you for sure, but from what I've heard, Michael Sam wasn't really forthright with the NFL teams that were interested in him and telling them that, hey, I'm I'm going to be followed around by this camera crew. He didn't tell anybody that he was going to be part of this documentary series, this reality TV show. Does that change your mind? Does that change your, the way you think about him doing this throughout this process? 
I've got their th- points on both sides of this we'll talk about today. You can call us at 968-NEWS. That's 968-6397 between the hours of 11 and noon to talk a little sports with us here on the Sports Blitz. So uh, that and much, much more. Nick Saban telling folks where they can place their rosy red lips uh, about some recruiting practices. Also, the Hogs uh, got a win in game one against Missouri in the uh, – almost said the SEC tournament, but it's the last SEC series before the tournament. And the Hogs, uh, with one more win, seems like, well, they can lock up a berth in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, yeah. They locked up the SEC tournament, which in this league, that's that's an accomplishment right there. Yeah. Just the depth of the SEC. But it looks like it would be very difficult to keep them out of a regional berth. Obviously, a host or or a two seed, that's obviously out. But uh, when you look at being in as a three seed, which that's uh, that's usually the threshold for at large, you know, you really don't see four seeds from major conference. Like you don't see 16 seeds in basketball. Yeah. Uh, So I think there'll be a three seed. I saw some projections I haven't gone to Stillwater, Oklahoma State, the top uh, top seed projected. Speaking of Oklahoma State, how about their APR situation, losing practice time and then football? I, I don't know if it'll have a huge effect, but that's something that caught my eye. But uh, as far as baseball goes, Mark, happy for Trey Killian. I mean, we know wins for him are hard to come by in spite of his uh, wonderful pitching effort. So it was good to see him get the W by his name. You know, Arkansas is pitching. You know, they've been pitching for the last few years. Offensively, it's been a little bit hit and miss. You know, we'll see how they handle some injury issues coming down the stretch. But you need to win at least one more, probably two more, just to feel good about finishing out the regular season. We do need to talk a little bit about the APR situation. Arkansas, uh, I believe it was 19 sports in all 19 yeah. for the second year in a row. They're above the APR threshold. In other words, they're not going to be punished but they're pretty close to that line in every one of them for the most part, and they're really far down the list in the SEC. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about how they sort of get – because it's kind of a – we don't understand the whole – and he may understand more than I do – the whole how this is calculated because there's some some curious – curious math that must be done and some curious things as far as how they what they consider and what they don't in the APR uh, the academic progress rating that you uh that you get as a university for having players graduate having players eligible that type of thing uh so we'll talk a little bit about that in our hog talk segment but want to get started real quickly with local sports like we said before on Wednesday You've got the soccer tournaments, the state 6A soccer tournaments, boys and girls, both uh, being hosted here in Russellville. I appreciate Robert Prohaska. I got busy yesterday taking around flyers and uh, doing all this for the sports banquet, so I wasn't able to get out there and take pictures, but he's going to send me some pictures from the games. Uh, The games are in two different locations this weekend. If you're interested in watching 6A soccer, you've got games at Cyclone Stadium and games at the – Soccer fields out by Old Post Park. So you've got two locations. You can go watch boys and girls soccer if you are so inclined, and you can be able to, uh, to, to partake in both of them. I think both uh, Cyclones and Lady Cyclones teams played back-to-back yesterday, so it was a pretty cool afternoon of soccer for those that uh, went and wanted to go out and watch. Also, the softball team, I think they won 18 to nothing. They played Little Rock Hall. Uh, it's one of those, or maybe it was fair. I think it was fair, yeah. It was fair. They, Either way. These Little Rock teams in baseball and softball and soccer, I mean, poor poor squads, man. They just don't have a chance. And really, in football, for the last several years, they've been getting a little bit better. But, man, they just – if it's not basketball, they're not very good. <laughs> and it's p- kind of a shame that they have to go out there and get whipped the way they do. And that's a bigger, bigger topic. Maybe they shouldn't include literally everybody because mm-hmm. some of these teams would rather just go home than get beat down 30 I, Jonesboro beat one of those Little Rock teams 31 to nothing yesterday in the 6A tournament in mm-hmm. baseball yeah I mean look I've been saying this ever since this format came down I mean to let everybody in I mean not only is it watering down the, the, the whole field itself but those teams don't even want to be there I mean <laughs> that's really the, the tough part about it. you know in the if it were the NFL or something and you know let's say they expand the playoffs and you had some seven and nines and I mean at least they would be in there competing and obviously they're all professionals so they would give some sort of effort to try to compete for a Super Bowl but when you have these bottom dwellers 6A 7A teams I mean they've mailed it in I mean they've been getting beat obviously every game anyway and so then they're going to place a top seed and then they're just going to really get beat down and talk about wasting gas and time it's just they need to look at that 
They, they really definitely do. do. Uh, some other information that I know of, like I said, Russellville 4-0 four, four yesterday. The baseball and softball teams both won. Both girls and boys soccer teams won. So they're, they're on to, I guess it's the quarterfinals. They're in the Elite Eight of the uh, right. baseball, of the soccer and uh, I guess baseball and softball too because there's only 16 teams in, right, in yeah, 6A. So you win so one, they got a, They got a shot there to go on to the final four if they can win these next games. But I know from 3A that Danville beat Melbourne 3-1. to one. I know Danville handed Lamar one of their three losses this year. And uh, so they're going on in the 3A state baseball tournament and the Lamar Warriors beat Flippin yesterday. Uh, that was a game that I was talking with a Lamar player on Wednesday and he said, that, you know, Flippin – is really good, and if we can get past them, we've got a shot to go uh, go deep in the 3A baseball tournament. So we say congratulations to uh, the Flippin or the Lamar Warriors beating Flippin. I'm trying to think of what Flippin's mascot is because the offs, the offs is that does that work? No, uh, <laughs> the uh, Flippin Flippin birds Flippin or burgers. Burgers, birds, whatever. Whatever. Lamar got the win. Uh, Danville beat Melbourne as well. We've got Dover and Pottsville playing baseball, and I believe that they both play today down there in the 4A tournament in Nashville. I told Coach Garrett Hill if he goes – they're going to Nashville. If they get to – I hope they win the game, for one. I hope they win, win game one so that they can stay, uh, for one. There ain't Jack in Nashville. Uh, they may they may be sleeping on my in-laws' couch down there. Uh, but I told him you got to go to La Vila. Or you've got to go to Simple Simon's because that Mexican joint, that pizza joint, the only two places worth eating there in town, and they're both really good. So, oh. Coach Hill, just convince Coach McCrady, Wes, listen to me, go down to eat at La Vila if you if you want, and well, either way, eat at La Vila because your kids are going to be upset if they lost, and they want to be lifted in their spirits <laughs> by some wonderful Mexican cuisine. And here we are with a, a nice commercial for somebody that's two and a half say, hours away. Are, are these people paying us? They need to be paying after what you They need to give me just, free food is what yeah. they need to do. I'm going down there this weekend. To, uh, the little man's getting pictures made, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be making my way to both of those places this weekend. Hopefully, I can. Man, maybe I can catch some Pottsville baseball. Maybe you can. If they make the finals, I or well, I guess the semifinals. Can you just text us I can be there. To go see that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I awesome. know he's only what a two weeks old and texting. He's he's kind of hardcore. Took his first walk yesterday. It was pretty sweet. No, he's kind of well. he's kind of looking around like the sun is too bright. Anyway, <laughs> uh, finally, I mentioned going around town, uh, around the Tri County area, delivering flyers for the Brightest Stars Banquet. It's getting real. It's getting more real by the day. Thirteen days from today, Thursday after next. We will be hosting the Brightest Stars Banquet at Russellville High School, and tickets are available. There are limited numbers of printed tickets available, and I went to Pottsville High School yesterday, Weldon, and unfortunately for Pottsville, they didn't do as well as, say, Dardanelle or Russellville or Clarksville at nominating their athletes, but... They're supporting the ones that are nominated. I went out there, and at least seven tickets have been sold. And I don't know, because what they had, I I just gave them the tickets in a little stand and said, hey, you can buy buy them here. Um, They had a list. And I don't know if they sold all ten, and these seven people on the list were the next seven, so that's 17, or if those were the seven that bought the tickets. Either way, at least seven tickets gone. Uh, They're from Pottsville at the the high school. You can buy them online at rivervalleyleader.com. You can find out about... All the special, excuse me, events that are going on at the Brightest Stars Banquet were given 22 awards, uh, everything from Player of the Year in each sport to an Assister of the Year, the Help Network Hand Up Award, going to the player who had the most assists in basketball this year, to Coach of the Year, to Assistant Coach of the Year. We released the nominees the other day, Weldon, for Coach of the Year and Assistant Coach of the Year. Uh, The Coach of the Year nominees are Mark Taylor from Hector, Chance Johnson from Pottsville, and Josh Price from Dardanelle, and then the Assistant Coach of the Year nominees are Mitch Wilson from Russellville, Sean Walter from Dardanelle, and Cliff Jones from Lamar. So we've got some really, really great coaches that are going to be honored there. And every person, we've got the certificates in, nice, thick, heavy certificates that we're going to frame up and give to each nominee. So nobody that shows up is going to leave empty-handed. It's going to be a really, really cool event. Yeah, I mean, when you mentioned those assistant coaches, it just it got me to thinking about winning because that's the common denominator when you look at those programs that have assistant coaches in the running, you know, winning. 
And then, then these players, I mean, obviously some players, their teams had better seasons than others, but for the most part, you have a lot of winning going on. So while these are individual accolades, we always say it always comes back to the team, and you're seeing these are successful players on successful teams. That's what really sticks out to me. Definitely. It's going to be a fun, fun night, and I'm looking forward to uh, to being a part of it. We got – uh, pretty much all the details ironed out. I've, mail, I've got to talk with the folks making the plaques for us the other day, and she's the only other person on the face of this earth who knows all the winners. Uh, also, <laughs> she's sworn so to speak. She, she can't say a single word, uh, but we are looking forward to having all the details ironed out. You can go to rivervalleyleader.com in the top right, and you can click where you can buy uh, via PayPal. It's a very simple, quick setup. And you can buy tickets online. If We've got a few here at the office, 1509 East Main Suite 4, next to La Chiquita in the Little Brangus uh, shopping center area that you can come by if you need to buy a hard copy ticket. We've only got a few of those left, but uh, we're selling those as well. So you can come by and get those so that you can take part in the Brightest Stars Banquet. This is the inaugural one. From here on, it's only going to get bigger and better. So we just uh, look forward to that on May 29th at Russellville High School. So. How about a quick shout out to Arkansas Tech Wonder Boys Baseball? Got the job done 4 to 2 in an opener NCAA tournament against Augustana. They play today. Emporia yeah. State, is yeah. that right? Yeah, Emporia State today, 3 30. So go check out the Wonder Boys. Tech Field, get out there and watch the Wonder Boys. We'll be right back after this break. Hi folks, Richard Roberts with Cogswell Motors in Russell. You know, we've been in business since 1949. A dealership doesn't stay in business that long under the same ownership unless you're doing something right, and that's taking care of customers. We have the largest selection of new Ford, Lincoln, Mazda, and pre-owned vehicles in the River Valley. So if you want the most for your trade, the best interest rate on financing, and the best price on a new or pre-owned automobile, come to Russell and see us. We're at 1900 East Main or visit us on the web at CogswellMotors.com. If you didn't count on KARK for today, this morning, here's what you may. Updated news. Please continue searching for suspects after a home intrusion overnight. Developing stories. It's another piece of presidential history turning up here in Arkansas. And weather and traffic on the force. Uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, we'll bring us our next chance rain. <laughs> Every 10 minutes. Around the clock. Making your day easy. So rise and shine and count on. Count on. Count on. KRK4 today. RiverValleyLeader.com is the number one local source for instant news in the River Valley. Offering HD video and live streaming along with top-notch coverage of all the news and events around the area. The River Valley Leader is the only place to go for all the information you need. Check out the newest local business featured on the site, as well as police news and coverage from important meetings, along with the personal stories, all at one convenient click. Check out rivervalleyleader.com. Today, there are more than 20 brands of cars being sold in America. So to be noticed, Ford and Cogswell Motors have to go further than anyone thought we could. How does Ford stand out above the crowd? Not just with plug-in vehicles like the new 2013 Ford Fusion Energy that gets a projected 100 miles per gallon equivalent, but also with a line of gas vehicles equipped with the innovative EcoBoost engines combining power and efficiency, plus a full measure of technologically advanced features. We invite you to stop into Cogswell Motors today. We go further than anyone thought we could, so that you can go further too. Michael Sam, probably heard that name a few times in the last two weeks as he became the uh, Missouri defensive end, became the first openly gay player drafted into the NFL by the St. Louis Rams in the seventh round. And now apparently he's going to be the star of a reality TV show. He's calling it, they're calling it a documentary series, which is a very creative way of avoiding saying reality TV show. Uh, I read a little piece from... uh, Whitlock, Jason Whitlock yesterday, who, uh, if you want to talk about controversy, he's not afraid to step in it, and he does it very often and very well, and he he had took some exception to Michael Sam not telling. Now, this is is all 
uh, reportedly, allegedly, obviously, we're here in Russellville, Arkansas. I'm, I don't have the context to even find out for sure if this is true. But if it is, uh, I want to know your thoughts on it. And you can have thoughts one way or the other. I, we'll, we'll weigh both, pros and cons. But allegedly, Michael Sam didn't tell anybody in the NFL that, you know, hey, I've already signed on to do this reality TV show. These cameras from Oprah Winfrey's network are going to be following me around. Uh, just let it be known before the draft. He gets drafted in the seventh round. Now he's going through the process of making this team. Camera's going to be following him around. Extra scrutiny, extra eyeballs on the St. Louis Rams uh, facility and their program. What do you think about this? Do you have an issue with him being on the show? My issue really is a little bit different than the one you brought up. And certainly that's an issue. But for me, it's about Michael Sam because – you and people have talked about this, so I'm not going to be the first one to say this, but he really does look bad when you come out and say, you know, I want to just be a player and I, you know, I want this to go away and blah, blah, blah. And you know, at some point, I just want to be a player. And then you have a show which perpetuates it. So, you know, I'm a little bit confused. If you want this to dissipate and you want to just be a football player, then why are you having a show on Oprah? I actually don't think the the impact on the Rams will be that great because I heard sort of the producer of the show or somebody affiliated with the Oprah's network say that, you know, the NFL, they have strict, strict restrictions around how much access we can have. We can't be in the locker room. We can't just, you know, be all in the mix. Obviously they can have they're gonna have outside people and things around the team. But as far as infiltrating, there won't be any of that. So I, so my issue really is just more with Michael Sam and his message, or really what's he trying to get across. Do you want to wave the flag of multiple colors, or do you want to be a football player and you know not have this be an issue? I'm a little bit confused for Michael. Here's the here's the the rub. He's an NFL seventh round draft pick. May not make the roster. We don't know. I, if I had to guess right now, I would say that. He won't make the roster. Now, just because of the, the pros and the cons, man, the cons seem to way outweigh the pros. I'm not talking about the gay or straight. I'm talking about playing on the field. Where does he fit? How does he help this team? We've documented how good the defensive line is for the St. Louis Rams. Where does he fit in? Is he a special teams guy? Well, then is it worth having this circus around him uh, for just another special teams guy? But on the flip side, Michael Sam is a, uh, a seventh-round draft pick. He's not guaranteed anything. He's got a chance to sign on the dotted line and say, pay me this much for this series, and he's got at least a little bit of income coming in from this. Can I blame him for this? I, I probably wouldn't do it myself, but I can't blame a guy for making some money while he can. It, it's, I'm just gonna, it's, it's about to be showtime. Everybody, let's all sit down. Matthew Lasseter. Matthew. Right. No, I actually just couch. had a question for you guys. Okay. Okay. I was going to say, will there be any pressure on the Rams – to sign Michael Sam. See, I, we talked about this in the break. I thought that there would be less backlash against the Rams for not keeping Michael Sam on because 31 other teams passed on him in the NFL draft, and the one that took him was the St. Louis Rams, and they gave him his shot. If you're going to be mad at anybody, be mad at the 31 teams who said, nope, we don't want anything to do with it. We're not even going to take that chance when the St. Louis Rams bring him in. If he can't hack it, that's not, his, that's not their problem. They get rid of him. But – Apparently, you guys disagree, and you think that the fact that he was picked up by the St. Louis Rams puts more pressure on them. No, what you're saying is, is logically right. Like I don't disagree with your logic. What I'm saying, though, is when you have these movements, when you have these, these periods or these formations of activism, logic isn't always on the front burner. When you're the St. Louis Rams and you draft Michael Sam, you put yourself in a position to where you put it on you. Like the other teams in the league no longer exist. Yes, they passed on him, and yes, that could be seen as offensive to Michael Sam. But by doing that, you eliminate yourself. So really, there's only one NFL team now if you're you know, you know, in that segment of the population. They're, the Rams, that's the only team that really exists. And so who grafted him, who passed on him, you know, you don't matter. You didn't you – didn't, you didn't draft Michael Sam. Now we're All we know at the about Rams. is the Rams. Yeah. All we know is the Rams. They're going to follow this situation closely. I'm not sure how much they know about football, but it's going to be focused all on, you know, his practices. Oh, you know, they, they had him take less reps today. What's up with that? You know, what's wrong with that? Oh, he – he had a half a tackle over a 10-play period. He did a really good job. They better bump him up to depth. It's like it's going to put you under more of a microscope. And I agree from a logical standpoint, 
it's off. But I just think if you're the Rams, you kind of put yourself in that position. It may not be an all-out riot against St. Louis, but it is a little bit of an issue, though. As we talk this out, as I think it out, Michael Sam right now is the number two, as far as draftees, the number two selling jersey in the NFL behind Johnny Manziel. So maybe that factors in and maybe the St. Louis Rams say, you know what? We can make some pretty good money <laughs> on having this, you know, special yeah. teams guy out there who, you know, he may be a third down pass rusher every once in a great while. He may play very, very little, but sell a bunch of jerseys, make a bunch of money, open us up to a, a new market, so to speak. Uh, they may end up keeping him for those reasons. I I find it hard to believe, and, you know, we'll see. We'll have to find out come training camp time if he's one of the guys that makes the team or if he gets the uh, the Vince Young treatment. We, we signed you, and then we cut you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Vince Young. Did he even get a helmet, a playbook with the Cleveland I think he Browns? did get a helmet. I saw a picture, unless oh. it was photoshopped. But oh, then okay. they were like, we're going to need that back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I will say this about Michael I'm going to need that stapler. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll say this about Michael Sam, though. I do think ultimately, though, from the Rams, Jeff Fish, I do think it will come down to football. Bottom line is he's going to have to, in training camp, show that he can get after the quarterback. That's really what it comes down to. There's nothing he can prove as far as being an every-down player. He can't prove that in the short period in which training camp is. He's going to have to show that he can fly off that edge and wreak some havoc. That's the only chance he has been in the league. Because even as a special teamer, you got to earn your keep in another way to get yourself on the roster. You know, when they cut to 75, down to 53, whatever the cut may be, you got to earn your keep before you can even be a special teamer. So I think he has got to get after the quarterback. That's his only real asset. And if he can't do that, I don't think he'll be around. I agree. All right, let's uh, let's move on real quickly. A couple other things before we hit the break. Did you see that the uh, Kentucky Derby uh, pay yeah. counter overpaid Wes Welker by about fourteen thousand dollars? That's why he was handing out hundred dollar mm-hmm. bills. He's like, these these idiots screwed up and gave me too much hey, money. They want it back too. Are they going to try to get it back? Yeah, they want I it back. I ain't no way I'd get it back. That's your fault. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to go to court or what. I mean, it's fourteen grand. It doesn't sound like a whole lot, but yeah, they want it back. That's their fault. <laughs> you overpay me. That's your that's yeah. you problem. So I agree. you have to figure something out. I saw that Johnny Manziel uh, was texting the Browns, and apparently um, he was telling them, hurry up, come up and get me. Yeah. And then also Jadavion Clowney, allegedly, I was looking at Twitter here. Somebody tweeted that, uh, I guess it was Darren Ravel, tweeted that, uh, Jadavion Clowney text the folks in the Houston Texans war room and said, if you don't draft me, I'm going to kill every one of you with my bare hands. I think it was sort of a tongue-in-cheek type joke. But yeah. uh, he's like, dude, you better draft me after all this <laughs> talking. You better pick me. And if you don't, you're we're, we're, you're going to have some payment. And he better perform, too, with that. But, yeah, Johnny Manziel, that, that story really is interesting. I mean, I heard it live on Sports Talk with Bo, and I'll give Bo his credit since this came from his show. I'll actually give, give him his props. And this, this story went national. Like, I'm sitting there, and I'm doing my my work and I'm listening to it and and you know Dow Loggins is on on the show and you know he explains this how it all went down as far as drafting Johnny Manziel then I'm looking on ESPN.com they have it Mike and Mike this morning they're talking about you know Dow Loggins that's what Greenberg called him it was on uh, Arkansas radio station and he said this and this story kind of went national I mean it's kind of strange I'm sitting here you know hearing it on a state show and, and it goes national but I don't think it's that big of a deal. You know, I think I heard somebody mention it, probably right. You know, Johnny may – we know Johnny can play a game. He may have been saying that to the Jaguars or, you know, some other people. I mean, not to say that he didn't have a relationship with Loggins in Cleveland, but I don't know if it's the, the Disney story that is being made out to be like, oh, they knew they had to do it. They knew at that moment they connected and they would be married. Johnny in Cleveland, that was the moment. I'm not sure if it was quite that far. Man, the best holder in Arkansas Razorbacks history is getting some run on ESPN. Yeah, yeah. Uh, congratulations to Dow Loggins, man. The, those that don't know, Dow Loggins, he played quarterback for Arkansas back in the late 90s, early 2000s, and he uh, he never made – he's about 5'3". He never made the field except for to do anything but hold for field goals and extra points. He, That's what he, he did. He hold that ball. Well, he was the best holder ever. He never missed one. Uh, so, <laughs> he's getting some run now because he's the quarterback's coach of the Cleveland – I almost said Cavaliers, Cleveland Browns there. And I didn't even notice that it was from Bo's show but I because I was just reading the headline here on ESPN. But I had a boy, Bo, getting out there and getting national. Yeah, this went national. Uh, well, I mean, 
obviously Skip and Stephen A steal our stuff every day, so we, yeah. we've been national for a while. But right. uh, it's glad that you. It's good that you caught up. Now Bo's been on ESPN several times, being uh, interviewed and stuff. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a that's big stuff for him. So um, also, let's see what else did we have here. There was something else that I saw. Uh, Kobe Bryant. This is we're gonna get in the NBA next uh, next segment. But before we hit the break, Kobe Bryant will not have a say in the new head coaching uh, search. Says Mitch Kupchak, the GM of the Los Angeles Lakers. I've been saying for a couple weeks now, Kobe's what, 35 years old? Yes. Why in the world would he have a say in the next tech? You're paying him $30 million. You just sit over there and you shut up and you collect a $30 million check. I don't care what you have to say. You're the reason we're in this situation right now. Because A, we're paying you too much. B, you're too old. Three, you're too loud. <laughs> You just you ran off Shaq in the middle of a three-peat because you had to be the guy. You're selfish. You got us championships after that, but at this point in your career, we don't need to hear from you. Matter of fact, if we could cut you, we would. That's what Mitch Kupchak wants to say. I, I feel like I feel like that started off as Mitch Kupchak and it turned into you <laughs> by the, by the time That's we true. got to the end of it. That's true. That's yeah. true. But uh, look, logically, yeah, Kobe he makes a lot of money. Uh, he's not part of the long-term plan. Look, the Lakers are under some pressure because Kobe's trying to put the heat on them to rebuild quickly, and there's just not a lot of avenues for them to rebuild quickly. There's not much as far as available free agents. Yeah, Carmelo's dangling out there, but, I mean, it's going to be tough with their financial situation. 2015 is kind of what people are gearing towards with Kevin Love and Rondo and people like that. Uh, as far as their coaching search, we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but their coaching search – they want. It looks like they're going to wait till after the lottery. They think the lottery could entice a coach. They think the lottery pick, if it's high enough, can be packaged to get a more seasoned, experienced top player in the league. So they're under some heat to try to get this thing turned around quickly. I just don't know if they can. If you build around Kobe Bryant at 35 years old, you're going to be in the same situation when he leaves two, three years from now. You're just wasting your time. You might as well. You've already hit rock bottom last year. You can't get worse than you were last year. You might as well build – Rebuild. No, nobody likes to hear the word rebuild. And Kobe said, I won't be a part of a rebuilding process. Well, guess what, buddy? You've already been a part of it twice. Once because you got hurt. Once because you decided you wanted to suck because you'd rather play by yourself than have Shaq on your team. So at the end of the day, you're in this situation because of Kobe Bryant. And you can't just let him run the whole franchise. At this point, I understand you offering him this contract. I don't understand you offering him that much because he's <laughs> holding the franchise hostage. But... I understand you being loyal to him and keep him around till the end of his career because you can't let him go someplace else. You just you want him to retire a lake or that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But man, it's really, really hard for me to understand you letting him have such a big voice when he's in the twilight of his career. If this were ten years ago, it's a different story. Right, right. So all right. We gotta hit a break. We come back. The NBA's Eastern and Western Conference finals are Solidified. You've got Oklahoma City, San Antonio, Miami, Indiana, round three. I guess did India did Oklahoma City? No, Oklahoma City got beat by Memphis last year, so it was yeah. two years ago that they played San Antonio. Yeah, yeah, beat them four straight games. So yeah, they lost two in a row and they won four in a row. So this is going to be a big series for Oklahoma City and Kevin Durant. He's got that what Weldon calls ring pressure on him, and Miami right there in the same sort of situation, going for a three peat. The Indiana Pacers under an immense amount of pressure. We'll talk about those series right after the break. Hi folks, Richard Roberts with Cogswell Motors in Russell. You know, we've been in business since 1949. A dealership doesn't stay in business that long under the same ownership unless you're doing something right, and that's taking care of customers. We have the largest selection of new Ford, Lincoln, Mazda, and pre-owned vehicles in the River Valley. So if you want the most for your trade, the best interest rate on financing, and the best price on a new or pre-owned automobile, come to Russell and see us. We're at 1900 East Main, or visit us on the web at cogswellmotors.com. Com. If you didn't count on KARK for today, this morning, here's what you may. Updated news. Please continue searching for suspects after a home intrusion overnight. Developing stories. It's another piece of presidential history turning up here in Arkansas. And weather and traffic on the force. Uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, we'll bring us our next chance right now. Every 10 minutes. Around the clock. Making your day easier. So rise and shine and count on. Count on. Count on. KRK4 today. RiverValleyLeader.com is the number one local source for instant news in the River Valley. 
offering HD video and live streaming along with top-notch coverage of all the news and events around the area. The River Valley Leader is the only place to go for all the information you need. Check out the newest local business featured on the site, as well as police news and coverage from important meetings, along with the personal stories, all at one convenient click. Check out rivervalleyleader.com. Today, there are more than 20 brands of cars being sold in America. So to be noticed, Ford and Cogswell Motors have to go further than anyone thought we could. How does Ford stand out above the crowd? Not just with plug-in vehicles like the new 2013 Ford Fusion Energy that gets a projected 100 miles per gallon equivalent, but also with a line of gas vehicles equipped with the innovative EcoBoost engines combining power and efficiency, plus a full measure of technologically advanced features. We invite you to stop into Cogswell Motors today. We go further than anyone thought we could. So that you can go further too. All right, we're back in our wheelhouse here talking NBA playoffs here on the Sports Blitz. It's Friday. Little reminder, we won't be here on Monday. We've got the uh, holiday, the Memorial Day holiday. Also, uh, mm. going to take some pictures with the little man. This is me taking a nap on the microphone because I don't care about pictures. What? Next Monday. That's what I said. Well, I won't be here Monday. That's what I'm saying. So oh, okay. So two Mondays from now. Well, I won't be here the next two Mondays. Uh, <laughs> actually, I guess what we can do then next Monday then. Let's see, we're just figuring this out right here on the air. Let's next Monday, it. I'll call in. How about that? All right. I'll call in next Monday. We'll have the show as normal. You won't even notice straight. any difference. And then two weeks from now on Memorial Day, we'll just take the day off. We'll play a best of. How about that? Maddie will put together a best of. Uh, which is probably not true, but Maddie's going to try to put together a best yeah. of. It, it may, <laughs> well, you can just pick any show, be the yeah. best of. No, man. It, it's it's time for us to have our highlight tape, Maddie. Seriously, it's like, you we know, sizzle reel. You know, like you know, I, 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 well, it's true. But you know, I, I, I'm evaluating all these players. I watch like a hundred, two hundred players every day, and I'm tired of seeing their highlights and everything. Like we need some highlights. We upload it on Huddle. And, you know, let, let big-time networks recruit us. Exactly. That's exactly. how this needs to go. All right. Well, NBA playoffs have weeded out uh, – well, let's – no, I don't want to use the biblical reference. They've weeded out the folks that don't belong. I was going to say they've uh, gotten rid of the chaff. What? The sheep and the goats. I know. Yeah, I was going to, to talk about threshing out the – oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> anyway, uh, there, there were some crappy teams in these playoffs, especially in the Eastern Conference, and now they're all gone. And we've got the Miami Heat. And the Indiana Pacers, and then in the West, you've got the San Antonio Spurs and the Oklahoma City Thunder. We can talk real quickly about the ends of those series. Uh, Miami beat Brooklyn in five games, which I said four, maybe five. It ended up being five. Games a lot closer, I'll just be honest, than I thought they would be. Indiana beats Washington in six, I said seven. Uh, San Antonio beat Portland in five, I said six. And then Oklahoma City beat the Clippers in six. I think I said seven. So uh, yeah. we, we pretty well had those series nailed down. Miami beat Brooklyn, and Oklahoma City beat Los Angeles since last we were on the air. Yeah, the the, the series I was most off was the Pacers. I think I had the Washington going in seven because you know, they were playing better at the time. Uh, but the Pacers got it together. They won that series. Uh, to me, the Spurs series wasn't a surprise. And really, the Clippers series wasn't a surprise. I had the Thunder in six. And, you know, I told, I said on a Wednesday, I really thought Oklahoma City could close it out uh, in game six. And you saw why um, on, on um, last night. Because the Clippers were playing sensational basketball for much of that game. They were crisp. They were moving the ball. They were doing everything right. And the Thunder were kind of sleepwalking. And then when the Thunder woke up, that lead evaporated like that, yep. and they went into and took the lead. And to me, that's, the Thunder are just better than the Clippers. Their stars are better stars. And, look, they overtook the, the Clippers. Hats off to them. We know they've been through a lot as players and have to deal with a lot more stuff this summer. But uh, the Thunder and the Spurs are going to match up. Can't wait to talk about that and then the Heat and the Pacers. Well, and we do need to talk about those here in a second. But, man, Chris Paul's getting hit pretty good with the, uh, oh, he's not great. He's really good, uh, but he's not great type mm, talk. Yeah. What do the Clippers, you think, have to do to get to that next level where they can win a series like this? I'll give you a couple couple things. For one, they're going to have to learn how to guard somebody. They, yes. they just don't stop anybody ever. Yes. And two, they're going to have to find somebody else that can – like Blake Griffin is an effort player. 
he's an effort player. He wants to to run over you and dunk. He wants to get lucky on mid range fifteen footers every once in a while. <laughs> it does look lucky. And you know he just wants to bull his way to the basket and get fouled. Chris Paul is really really good. He's a distributor, but I mean really your your best players outside of Chris Paul and Blake Griffin are DeAndre Jordan and uh, JJ Redick and Jamal mm. Crawford, and you just don't have. Another guy who, yeah. you know, Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant are at a different level. Right. And, you know, it, when you just put them next to Chris Paul and Blake Griffin, it's just a notch below. So, mm. what do you do? You have to beat them the San Antonio Spurs way. You have to get five guys who can beat two. And Oklahoma City was just better. You said it all week, was just better than the Clippers. What do the Clippers have to do to win that type of series? I really think they need – a wing, legitimate wing utility player, a guy who can put the ball in the hole, a guy who can defend that wing, because that's where they're weak. You know, we talk about their front line. Their front line is solid with with uh, Griffin and DeAndre. Chris Paul obviously is a point guard, but like, what's in between them? You have a specialist in JJ Redick. You have a Matt Barnes who he tries, but he's not strong enough to be that type of defender or athletic enough to be that type of defender. He's a wannabe Doug Christie, huh? Yeah, he is a wannabe Doug Christie. You're right on the money. And then Danny Granger, he's just too physically past what he used to be when he was the star in Indiana. So he's not the answer. Jared Dudley, you know, I he's not that old, but he acts like he's old. Yeah. So they need a wing type guy who can defend some positions and can also help out scoring wise because you're right. Chris Paul can score, but he's a point guard. Blake's going to get his 20 to 24 points a game, but they're going to be through hustle and effort. And obviously, DeAndre is just dunks. So, Man. you know, they need they need that wing type guy to me. Maddie, if you had to guess, how old's Danny Granger? He's making 13 million bucks this year, too, by the way. How, how old is Danny Granger? I would really have no idea. I'm going to say 30. Am I even am I on the 31 right? Thirty one years old. I was gonna say thirty two. See, I, I see, I was gonna say thirty two. When, when I thought Danny Granger, I thought twenty eight, twenty seven. Yeah. But he's older than I even thought. So yeah, he's he's not the guy. I mean, he's a he's a role player at best. Uh, you've seen him take a steep decline over the last year or so. Maybe that's why Indiana got rid of him. That in thirteen million mm. bucks, that'll that'll do it to you. Uh, but anyway, the. We'll have all offseason to talk about what the Clippers can and can't do. They're just sort of a, a faultily built team. That's how uh, Vinny Del Negro goes bye bye. That's how Doc Rivers is pulling his hair out. And yeah. You see the bald spot working its way into <laughs> Doc. <laughs> I know it is. Uh, Miami got Brooklyn in game five. Uh, Arkansas's own Joe Johnson lit up LeBron for a couple minutes there when really. When a guy's six, seven, six, eight, and he wants to shoot it, he can pretty much shoot it. LeBron can guard you as as well as he can. Right. And Joe Johnson was just able to get shots off. And when they're all going in, they're all going in. There ain't much you can do about it. LeBron's one of the best defenders in the world. And Joe Johnson put him on skates for a little while the other night. But Miami wins the series. Brooklyn, uh, the highest uh, payroll in NBA history. Half that's probably going bye-bye after this season. Yeah. I, I would expect that Kevin Garnett should retire, but knowing the money he's owed next year, he can come in and play his 20 minutes a game and catch that last guaranteed year of salary and uh, and just sort of go with it. Paul Pierce probably gone. It's going to be a new-look Brooklyn Nets team. Uh, let's talk about your thoughts on Game 5 and the Miami Heat going to the Eastern Conference Finals. Well, I, I thought Miami did a great job closing that game out because – they were down by eight with about three minutes to go. I mean, like Brooklyn, I don't know, some, they, they figure out a way to just, I mean, they're, they're annoying. They just kind of grind on. They're not great defensively, but I thought Miami, once they got the defensive pressure going, forced turnovers, got open threes, and there was nothing Brooklyn could do at that point. I think when you look at the Nets and – they weren't going to win this series, but you got to be disappointed in a guy you're paying close to $100 million as your point guard. I'm talking about Darren Williams. Yeah, he's Dar done, man. Yeah, Darren Williams. There was a time where Darren Williams was in that top two or three in the, in the, in the league as a point guard. I mean, he could run the show. You know, some people say, well, even though he and Jerry Sloan had issues, that, that system was great for him. I don't know what it is. But Darren Williams is not the 18, 20 point, 11 assist guy he used to I be. I think it's of. injuries. You might be right. I mean, and then obviously if it's injuries, then his career as far as being a top player is over. But that was really disappointing. Obviously not having Lopez you know, when he got hurt during the season. But Darren Williams didn't show up. 
he just down. He didn't show up. No, I agree. He's he's man. It's a shame because he was really really good. Even when he first got to Brooklyn, he he had a rough patch, and then he got healthy for a little bit, and you saw flashes. But yeah, he's probably uh, on the decline. Something sort of like Dwayne Wade. Now he Dwayne Wade still can show some flashes. He had twenty eight the other night, uh, where you know when he can play every other type game. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll try really hard this game, and then LeBron, you can go score forty five next game. Uh, he can still be really effective, and, and Darren Williams doesn't necessarily have that luxury. Right, so, right. Well, let's look at the Eastern Conference Finals three years in a row now, Indiana, Miami. Um, Indiana's got a, a huge monkey on their back here, and it's the two-time defending champion Miami Heat. Can they overcome Miami? No, they cannot <laughs> overcome Miami to win the series. But I will say this, though. And, Maddie, I'm, I'm really talking to you and people of your ilk. <laughs> All right, Tony. This is not – this is not college basketball where you can look at, oh, this team's hot. They won nine straight going in the tournament. I'm going to take them to the Sweet 16. Or, oh, this team's lost four out of five. They're not playing well coming to the tournament. In the NBA, you can win by 20 one night, lose by 30 the next. So even though the Pacers have looked nothing short of terrible the first couple of series, I think it'll play a little bit into this series, but I don't think it'll be a huge factor. I expect Indiana to be ready. I had Indi- I picked Miami to beat them in six before uh, the playoffs started, and I'm going to stick with that right now. I don't think they will beat Miami whatsoever, but I don't think they will look like the team. Because if they play the way they played in the first two series, they'll lose in four or five. But I think they will be better than that against Miami. I think they will push Miami to a degree. I'm going to still go uh, Indiana in six. Obviously, if it goes seven back at uh, Indiana- Indianapolis, then it could get interesting, but I'm going to take the heat in six. Look, the Pacers are a bad matchup for Miami. They've got big dudes. They've got guys who can pack the paint, can guard. And if Miami's not hitting shots, it's a tough, it's a tough game for them. They're definitely not going to be uh, able to match up with you know David West and Roy Hibbert down low if that's what it came to. I'm glad Roy Hibbert's been playing terrible until this last couple weeks because maybe his confidence is shaken to the point <laughs> to where Miami can have some success there. But David West has given them trouble. And if you know, if, if you remember the last couple of years, they've had to put LeBron James on Dwayne or on uh, David West at the four, wears him down pretty pretty right. well. Uh, so they're going to try to do that as sparing as possible and leave LeBron to uh, to guard somebody like Stevenson or at very worst Paul George uh, in stretches but they don't want him to have to bang with guys like David West down low and get himself tired and beat up and so that he can't be as effective on offense this series to me comes down to two things one if Miami can make shots right. if, if the perimeter guys can hit shots I'm looking at you Chris Bosh Ray Allen uh, Shane Battier James Jones and then the big X factor we know. It's it been right. the same way for the last three years as Dwayne Wade. Yeah. Can he play at a high enough level to help Miami get past Indiana? Because when you stack these two teams up, Indiana may have more talent overall. They Top don't have bottom. LeBron James, right. and they don't have Dwayne Wade. And if if all the other talent from Indiana can match LeBron, now I'm putting the whole roster up against LeBron. <laughs> you know, if they can take and you know overmatch LeBron James, the – sort of X factor in this series and the one the tipping point for Miami is Dwayne Wade he's an all-time great player can he be that in this series if he can and I don't see why not he hasn't been hurt and dinged up he's had plenty of rest over the last couple weeks if he can Miami wins this in six games they're not they, it, honestly looking at the home court advantage for Indiana over the past couple weeks we've seen in the playoffs yeah. uh, where they play doesn't matter they win on the road they lose at home it doesn't matter right so you know and Miami is a tougher place to play on the road than Washington and then Atlanta so they're they're probably not going to win as many games on the road but I can guarantee you Miami ain't afraid of going to Indiana either no I don't think they are either and look I, I'll go back to something I've always said If you're going to beat Miami, not in a game, not in two games, but if you're going to beat them four out of seven times, you got to put the ball in the hole. I mean, you you, you really do. If Indiana wants to win this series, I'm going to make this prediction. They're going to have to score 100 points twice. They they can beat Miami in two games scoring 92, whatever, 93 points. But if they want to beat them four times, they're going to have to score 100 points at some point in this series, and I don't think they're capable. I agree with you. Miami shot makers have to make shots. That's what concerns me about them this year than last year. Uh, you know, James Jones is going to have to come in and be like Mike Miller. Cole is going to have to start hitting some shots. And then Rashard Lewis, I, 
I don't know if I've seen him hit a shot since he's been in Miami. I saw him make a layup one time. I don't know if I've <laughs> seen him make a three since he's been there. It would be nice if he'd go back to his 9 version, but I think that version is gone. But, yeah, Indiana's going to have to score 100 points a couple of times. I don't think they can do it. Well, I'm looking back here through the series so far. Guess how many times Indiana scored 100 points in the playoffs so far? If you once. had to guess. One time. And let me make sure. Yeah, one time. And then they're averaging here, – here are their scores. They're winning and losing scores. Not the, the other team scored. Just Indiana. This is how many points they've scored in their two series. Uh, and this – I think it was the first game of the series. No, that was the second second game. Yeah, the second game of the Hawks series. They, they won 101-85. to 85. That's the only 100-point game that the, the – uh, Indiana Pacers have scored in these playoffs. They went in the first round, 93, 101, 85, 91, 97, 95, 92. And then this last series, they went 96, 86, 85, 95, 79, <laughs> 93, 93. To Weldon's point, you don't score 100 points. You don't give yourself a chance. They're the number one defensive team in the, uh, in the playoffs so far. Part of that has been because they play good defense. Part of that has been because they have been scrapping – because they suck on offense. I think Miami is going to score enough points, and that's the difference in this game. They can score 90. Uh, you know, LeBron can score 35. Dwayne Wade can score 20. And Chris Bosh can score 20. And they can score 90 in their sleep. Yeah. Indiana's got to get above that threshold. Look, last year they gave me pause, and I've said all season long, man, Indiana worries me. I'm less worried now than I had been, but I know that there was reason for that worry. Right. It's the fact that Indiana is pretty good. If this were the NCAA tournament, I would have been right there with you. Like one game, winner take all. I so, said, you know, yeah. Indiana might beat them on the glass. In Miami may be cold shooting one night. Patriots could get them four out of seven times. I can't see it. No, that's Maddie's point. He said, you've got to beat LeBron James four times. I don't know how you do it. And you watch San Antonio, San Antonio last year in the finals. They had to try to beat him. <laughs> Four times. They got three of them, almost got the fourth one. That's something – there's something to be said about beating one of the all-time greats four times. Maddie, what do you have to say? I do agree with what I said earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I say, now, what, what I was going to say is I can't I can't find the stat. I heard it last night, and I don't Well, wanna, I know it, so just yeah, tell Yeah, probably <laughs> so. You, you guys' collective brain power can probably figure it out. Um, the Wizards – you have to look at that series for me. You have to look at it different, the Wizards and the Pacers series, because the Wizards – haven't won a playoff game at home in decades. And I can't find the stat, but it's like they were just that bad historically for decades at home. So you're saying, yeah, well, the you know they all, the, the only game that they – or the first game that they won was yeah. in Indiana, and then they lost all those at home. Yeah. And they lost game six at home, of course. Man, but they did lose all, th- all three games at home. That's the thing. Basic, yeah. you, you, I just think you have to take that into consideration when looking at – this Pacers team, and I know you like you were saying. Well, you can't you can't look at the last series and be like, well, it's going to go this way because the team is playing this particular way. But right. still, especially because of the opponent in the Wizards, I think you have to take that into account more than you would normally, just because of how historically bad that they've. Been. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I think I think you're right about. Um, I, I don't think Indiana should have more confidence. I don't think anybody should look at Indiana positively based on the fact that they only won three road games. Uh, yeah, Washington, for some strange reason, is terrible at home. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I mean, they, they lost to Chicago. I mean, they, they, I think they beat Chicago on, on the road a lot. Uh, but for some reason, they can't win at home. The fans, uh, they must not be appreciated. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. But, look, for me, I think that every series has a, has a life of its own. We're about to talk about the West San Antonio sliced and diced a young Portland team, jumped them by 25, just like that. Uh, the script, I'm going to just tell you, is going to be flipped. Maybe not completely, but this next series, you'll be like, are these the same Spurs from the Blazers series? They look completely different. Well, because they're, they're going to go up against a team that actually knows how to play basketball. Uh, this, the Portland Trailblazers are going to be pretty good eventually when they figure out Oh, it, it can't be one on one every play. It can't be Lamarcus Aldridge, you know, pounding it at 17 feet and then turning around and hit, shooting a fadeaway. That doesn't work when you play against teams like the Spurs. You have to get everybody involved, and they know what to take away and how to take away what you do best and make you beat them another way. Portland didn't have that other way, and that's what San Antonio uh, was able to do to them. When you play Oklahoma City, you've got two choices. You can either put all your eggs in stopping Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook and 
you know, try your absolute best to stop those two and make everybody else beat you. Or you can live with those two beating you and not let anybody else beat you. I know beat. which one I'm picking. I, I'm trying my best to to keep Kevin. I, I, I don't want your best player to beat me. That's just what I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can understand where I think where you're going, but if I'm Oklahoma City, I'm, I'm happy because San Antonio doesn't have anybody that can guard both of those guys, Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant. Uh, and you go, go back to Memphis. Memphis had Tony Allen. He yeah. was doing a pretty good job. Uh, the Clippers, they didn't really have much for Kevin Durant, but they had uh, they had Russell Westbrook going crazy too for for Oklahoma City. This is going to be a fun series to watch, though. Yeah, it is. And to answer your question, when it comes to the Thunder, I'm definitely targeting the Stars. I mean, and it's really Scott Brooks' fault because they don't really run offense. They just have two of the, in my opinion, two of the top four players He's in basketball. He's not a real good coach. <laughs> I mean, they they got two of the top four players in the game. So even if even though they're playing ISO ball, they can still get away with it because they're two of the top four players in all of basketball. Uh, but as far as this series, look, San Antonio. Now look, the injury situation is something to watch. What's Serge Ibaka's status? Tony Parker's status? I will say this though, if if Tony Parker is damaged really at all, it's really over at that point. Ibaka. If Tony Parker's healthy and Ibaka's not healthy, then, yeah, the Spurs have the advantage. If they're both playing somewhat, I still give the Thunder the advantage. Look, the the Thunder, when they want to play defense, look at that series two years ago. They didn't really play defense those first two games. They just kind of, you know, stood around, let the Spurs run their offense, and then tried to outscore them, and the Spurs ran them out. Then when they locked in and started playing pressure defense in the half court, getting in passing lanes, all that stuff, all this European passing that I love from San Antonio, that stuff was getting deflected and turned over. And the problem with the Spurs is once you get the thunder in transition, it is over. And the Spurs, they like to shoot threes. That's part of their system. Long misses, long rebounds, pew, See ya. and that's the problem. Yeah, if I'm the Oklahoma City Thunder, I'm trying my best to – you can really – with San Antonio, as hard as it has been over the past decade and a half to stop that team because of how well they share the ball, you can play a better, you know, more fundamentally sound defensive strategy and stop San Antonio because they pass the ball around. If you play in, you know, you learn in high school or junior high even, you know, where you are one pass away, two passes away, three passes away, where you are in defensive position, and that stuff works against teams like San Antonio. Uh, But what's hard is actually being disciplined, and Oklahoma City's got to be disciplined. If they can get out and run, like you said, they've got the athletes that they can beat San Antonio. Uh, Who are you taking to win? Uh, I'm going to take the Oklahoma City Thunder – I'm thinking about six or seven. That's what I'm battling with. I'm going to go ahead and say six. I'm going to take Oklahoma City in six. The injury situation is one I'm keeping in mind. But either way, Tony Parker has to be healthy. So the fact that he's even questionable confirms in my mind I'm taking Oklahoma City. Although I'd like to see Heat Spurs, I think it's going to be Thunder and Heat. Here's what I, I – and I'll give you the, the same option I'm about to do here. Go I'm kind of going to hedge. Uh I've got San Antonio winning the series if Tony Parker plays at 100%. Because okay. overall, like I said, you know, San Antonio, man, I don't like the way that I don't like them. I don't like Tony Parker and I don't like Manu Ginobili. Cannot stand Manu Ginobili, what? actually. Like, always liked Tim Duncan. He's a great player, one of the best of all time, probably the best four man of all time. But I hate the way they play. If Tony Parker is healthy, that's just – it's too tough to stop. It's easy in theory to say you play sound defense and you can beat them. Uh, they have a bigger margin for error than Oklahoma City does when it's, okay, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, if you're not making shots, we lose. Sure. Uh, the, you know, Oklahoma City has, has such a thin margin for error that it shows you how great Westbrook and Durant are. But I'll take San Antonio if, if he's Tony healthy. Parker's healthy in seven games. That's Because San Antonio's the, the one seed, they'll have home court. Uh, I would give them that advantage. If Tony Parker is even the least bit hobbled in this series, I go the other way, I go Oklahoma City in six. And, and- in, in fairness to you, he doesn't have to be sitting out either. So I, I, I think you still deserve that excuse, even if he's out there, but it's just painfully obvious he's not the same. I'll, I'll hedge too, but I'm not even. I'm not going to use your injury hedge. So maybe my head is illegal, but I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway. Go for it. If Russell Westbrook's head is on straight, I'm feeling good because see that's the thing with Chris Paul, Tony Park, all these traditionally great point guards. 
They are facing a freak of nature in Russell Westbrook. True. He wears down the Tony Parkers of the world and all that. Russell Westbrook is a problem for people. Now, he can be a problem for the Thunder, too. And, if, and if he is, you're going to be right. The Spurs headed to the NBA Finals. So if Russell Westbrook's head is on right, I'm going to stick with Oklahoma City. Russell Westbrook last night, wouldn't you guess, wouldn't you, uh, wouldn't you just absolutely be blown away by the fact that Oklahoma City closes out the Los Angeles Clippers and Russell Westbrook shot eight less shots than Kevin Durant? And that's something. And in that, just imagine if they could get that through his head on a nightly basis. Right. Look, all I want you to do is take fewer shots than him. I don't care what else you do. Just take fewer shots than him and we'll win this series. Because they win every time, it seems like. He shoots less than Kevin Durant. And there's extenuating circumstances. If Kevin Durant's 3 for 17, right. go ahead, Russell Westbrook. We need you to score like 38 like night. you did against the Clippers in Game 5. But if Kevin Durant's got it going or if we've got a chance to get Kevin Durant going, you just take one less shot. And we'll win this series. If I'm Scott, yeah. Bro- Scott Brooks, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, look, I'm not gonna, I- I'm not gonna follow the stat sheet. I'm just saying, in your mind, try your best to defer a little bit to Kevin Durant. That's uh, we win when that happens. I so. mean, well, if he starts thinking like a facilitator, because he gets in the paint whenever he wants. I don't care how much you back off him, he still blows by you and yep. gets in the paint. That dude is a problem. Uh, but if he's jacking up contested shots, you know Pop's going to make him try to take contested jumpers, uh, then the Spurs are in business. All right, Nick Saban. Well, we got to look at real quickly. We've just got a couple minutes, and we're, we're over time anyway, but we can do what we want. So, <laughs> Kevin, uh, Steve Kerr, the, the topic of conversation came up around Steve Kerr, and I want to get to this on uh, Monday when I call in, uh, and not because it's Memorial Day. Uh, Steve Kerr brought up in discussion because – Phil Jackson wanted him. Now he spurns the Knicks and he goes to the Golden State Warriors. I probably would have gone the other direction, but that's just because I'd like to go, you know, the nowhere but up sort of job rather than right. the this team's pretty good and I could come in here and, you know, lose a few more games and be on the hot seat immediately. Uh, but he goes to the Golden State Warriors. He takes a five-year, $25 million deal. For those not real good at math like me, that's five million bucks a year to be the Golden State Warriors head coach when a couple months ago he wouldn't even be mentioned. Yeah, and, you know, I, I really wasn't terribly shocked. I just look at the Knicks are not stable. I mean, James Dolan, that cloud hanging over, that concerns people because Phil Jackson doesn't have all the power. Even though you wish he would, he should, Dolan's hand is still on that organization. As long as he signed the checks, you can't do anything about it. And then I think Steve Kerr looked at why do coaches fail with the Knicks? They've had so many coaches in such a short period of time. What's the common denominator? James Dolan. James Dolan. His family's on the West Coast. He's got a daughter going to school at Cal. It was just a convenient fit. But I agree with you, though. The bar is higher with Curry Thompson in that roster. Yeah, they have to win and win quickly. They can't – in New York, they could miss the playoffs next year. He'd be all right. Mm-hmm. Golden State. He better make the playoffs. He's in the West instead of the East. There's just some built-in disadvantages to going to Golden State, but he has the advantages that he wants, his family, and uh, better players as far as the team goes. So uh, more power to him. I hope he does well. Uh, all the conversation about why Steve Kerr, why is he brought up, what difference does it make? You, would you rather go with a uh, retread guy that you know has okay? Well, he can get us to forty some odd wins and sneak us into the playoffs. Or would you rather go with a guy who you think has a lot of upside? It's going to happen with Derek Fisher at some point. It's going to happen. I think Mark Jackson's going to get another head coach, a uh, head coaching job. I've heard Stephen A. and these guys go at this for two weeks. Well, why is Steve Kerr the big name? Yeah. Because it's unknown. You think okay, I can go with this guy who is a C coach or C player. It's the same top topic in NBA draft when people go after the one-and-done player over the four-year guy who's proven, well, this guy, this is his ceiling. This guy, we were looking for the next LeBron James who can carry our franchise for the next 10 years. You look at coaches the same way. Steve Kerr, he could be okay, or he could be really, really great. All these other guys, Mike Woodson, you know what you're getting from him. You're not yeah. getting a proven championship coach. But you you're ha- getting a guy who's been there and you, been okay. You would have to agree, though, it didn't get to this point till Phil Jackson got in the That's why. That, yeah, that's, no, why that's, that's, that, that's the whole thing about it. Like, it, it is, that's like, why I, it makes more sense to me. Well, see, and see, that's why I think it's a logical fallacy because, like I said, Steve Kerr, 
is expected to go to New York and be Phil Jackson's guy. And there's a reason why you don't hear Calipari and Thibodeau and all these established coaches linked with the Knicks the way they link with the Lakers because everybody knows the Knicks want a Phil Jackson guy. Yeah. And so for me, you think I think it'll be Fisher. Well, I think it could be Fisher, Tyron. It's not going to be a big name. Like you just, everybody, oh, Mark Jackson's from Queens. Uh, it's going to be a Phil Jackson guy unless Phil just can't find anybody. So Tyron Lou, Derek Fisher, Kurt Rambis. I mean, it's going to be an underwhelming Don't hire hire. Kurt Rambis. Well, I mean, I think it's going to be either way an underwhelming hire. I mean, you could say Derek Fisher's a lot of upside, but it's not going to be one of these big name Hollywood coaches because they've already built their name, doing it their way, winning their way. Phil Jackson, I think he wants his guy, even if it's not a, a huge name. I understand guys like Stephen A and people like Jamel Hill feel a little bit of pressure to to make this I don't want to say they make issue. it an issue but they bring it up yeah. because there are people who say well this ain't fair the black guy got fired you know Mark Jackson got fired I don't think he should have been fired I think it was an issue between him and the owner right. it was an isolated incident he's going to get another job Mike Woodson got another job uh, Derek Fisher is going to get a job in the future I don't I, I don't think that it's I think they're doing a disservice to some coaches. I'm on the flip side with the the Knicks. I don't want them to hire Kurt Rambis because he's a retread. I don't want that if I'm the Knicks, I don't want a guy who oh well he's his ceilings here when we could go get a guy. That's why I don't have a problem with Steve Kerr being a high choice, a hot name on folks radar. Weldon's exactly right. The reason that he's there is because uh, Phil Jackson put him there. Yeah. If Phil Jackson didn't want you with all those rings, now, I can't hear you. I've got rings coming out of my ears. Uh he wouldn't be a, a name yeah. if it weren't for for uh, Phil Jackson. But at the end of the day, he was because it's the unknown. He could be a high ceiling guy when you know what you're getting from some of these retreads. Please don't make this issues that about stuff that doesn't that don't matter. I mean, yeah. I just it kind of frustrates me. No, I know. Look, if my question is not the race side of it. My question is what got him to be a hot name. Yeah. Right? It is not. It is my issue is not that. You know, oh, Mark Jackson got fired. Mike Woodson, you know, you know, second chances, all that stuff. My issue is that you know, be your own person. You're a GM. You run a team. You're an owner. You you're a powerful individual. Why are you being a lamb following Phil Jackson's lead? I guess that's my only question. You say, well, Phil's won. Okay, great, but understand. Coaching under Phil Jackson is not like coaching anywhere else. You know, most coaches, you know, the, the Bus family, they're not going to tell the new coach what to run. New coach is going to just run whatever. Phil Jackson, he's not meddling because he's telling them up front, okay, this is what I want you to do. So I don't consider it meddling, but he is going to have his hand over the, the organization. And I think if I look, I'm under Utah Jazz or somebody, I don't follow that lead. I'm, I'm doing something different. I guess that's my only point. Good point. Good thought. All right, uh, Nick Saban. We got to get out of here, but we got to tell you about Nick Saban. He, uh, shockingly, they're being accused at Alabama of offering things like Corvettes to players. Uh, Pat White, is that who it was? Yeah, Pat, Pat White, White, former West Virginia quarterback, turned NFL wide receiver for about five minutes. He, uh, he's saying that Alabama offered him a Corvette to come or offered him a car, and he said, "You guys shouldn't be shocked because some Alabama recruit a uh, brand new car." Don't know where he got it, but, you know, Pat White says, this has been happening for a long time at Alabama. Uh, they offered me a car to come there. They're offering this guy a car to come there. And he, I don't think it's all that big a deal. I think it's a, it's not a shock to me no. that Alabama's doing this because everybody's doing this, in my opinion. Uh, but Nick Saban, when asked about it, said, you can kiss my – you can fill in the blank yeah. here. Yeah, uh, look, it, it's been going on forever. It's common. Not saying it's right or great, but it is common. It does happen. Um, you know, these things aren't systematic. So, you know, this Saban orchestrating this, does any of these powerful coaches orchestrate this stuff? No, they don't. It's it's outside of the house. So when the NCAA gets involved, the organization, the school is clean, but that doesn't mean they're not aware of things that go on. So it's not a big deal to me. I want to read you something real quick, Mark, before we go. It kind of answers something you mentioned the other day okay. about the APR. I was seeing an article here that says the APR – mandates that any player departing for the NBA draft must do so while in good academic standing or be damaging to the program's cumulative score. So I guess with the Kentucky guys, allegedly they are going to school the second semester. Yeah. Allegedly they are finishing their freshman year, so they're, quote, in good standing. Hilarious, yeah. And Kentucky gets a perfect score while Arkansas squeaks by and they had six guys graduate. <laughs> Gra Four-year graduate. And then Kentucky has six guys go pro 
and somehow gets a better score. How does that work? I don't know because graduation is now, not is as that important basketball as going or pro. the whole athletic department? basketball. Yeah, that, that is that's something. I mean, even you know a D Wagner, that's not going to affect it that much. A guy who leaves, you know, I I, I was going to say the composite score is understandable because. Yeah, I think Bobby Petrino in that era, you still have some guys who kind of ran off earlier and didn't quite make the cut or whatever, so that's going to hurt football as far as graduating. But, yeah, um, that, that that doesn't make sense in yeah, basketball. Yeah, it's, it's a questionable, questionable uh, number-crunching. Uh, or the system. The numbers might be fine, yeah. but the system may be a little bit flawed. Yeah, you might want to fix that just so that when Arkansas has six players graduate, what else could they possibly do? You know, I mean, yeah, the people don't always fit in, and they, they got to get punished for D. Wagner wanting to go play right. someplace else. If he's eligible and then he goes someplace else and he plays and he's eligible, what's the difference? What's the, difference? What's the point uh, in worrying about it? So, anyway, all right, Maddie, we got to get out of here. We've went over time, and we didn't take our last break. So, we just ran on for about 35, 40 minutes straight, and uh, we do what we want. So, we're going to have a sizzle reel for you next Monday after next. Yeah, Maddie's going to put together a best of. It's going to be just hellacious on him to try to find – just an hour of great talk that we've, mm. you know, because we're just we're just that hard like So tape. We'll be out of here for the weekend. I'll be calling in on Monday. You'll be seeing uh, the big man here on camera on the one shot. So uh, yeah, unless we can find somebody else to come in here and sit with him, uh, that's we'll even fi- if we we'll do figure it, it out. Even if we do, it's still gonna be on me. We'll figure it out. This that other person will be the voice of, of in the dark. So uh, that's all the time we've got for a Friday. We hope you'll join us on Monday for Weldon and Maddie and even David over here learning the. The ropes of production. I'm Mark saying so long. Monday back here at 11 o'clock for more Sports Blitz.